Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Bridge Course in English Literature that is offered by the Department of English of Yashwant Mahavidyalaya Nandit. In this video, we are going to look at a brief history of English poets and poetry. The father of English poetry and the father of English language are the titles that are credited to Geoffrey Chaucer belonging to the 14th century. The Canterbury Tales is a beautiful piece of collection that is written by Geoffrey Chaucer, written in 1385. As the title indicates, this poem is a collection of 24 poems and all these poems are titled as tales. For example, Miller's Tale, Knight's Tale and so on. The Canterbury Tales depicts the social, political, religious and economic life of contemporary England. The characters narrate their stories and reveal various aspects of English society. In fact, the Canterbury Tales is uh, a reflection of 32 pilgrims that undertake a pilgrimage tour to St. Thomas Beckett's Mount. And for passing the time, each is decided to tell two stories while going and two stories while coming. Geoffrey Chaucer has planned to create 32 plus 32, 64 while going and 64 while coming, thereby counting it to 128 tales. He could write hardly 24 um, and leave it incomplete. But the prologue that he writes to the Canterbury Tales, which is a sort of introduction, is marvelous, giving us the entire socio-political, religious and economic picture of England. The other poems by Chaucer are The Book of the Duchess, The House of Fame, The Legend of Good Women, and Troilus and Cressida. Truly, Geoffrey Chaucer of the Middle Ages is the father of English poetry. During the Elizabethan period, we have poets like Sir Thomas Watt and Henry Howard, who is the Earl of Surrey, commonly called as Watt and Surrey, who introduced the sonnet to English poetry. We have Edmund Spencer, who has written a long allegorical poem titled as The Fairy Queen in 1519. The Shepherd's Calendar is a beautiful piece of poem by Edward Spencer written in 1579. Emerity is a sonnet sequence that Spencer has written in 1595 devoted to Elizabeth Bowell, his lover. Epithalamion, a poem written on the occasion of his marriage with Elizabeth Boyle in 1595, is famous as a marriage song along with Prothalamion, which is a poem written on the occasion of the wedding of the daughters of a duke. Sir Philip Sidney is the next Elizabethan poet who has written an apology for poesy or the defense of poetry. In fact, the defense of poetry that he has written in 1595 establishes Sir Philip Sidney as a critic and a wonderful poet. His sonnet sequence, titled as Astrophil and Stella, published in 1591, addressed to Penelope Devery, who in fact has married Mr. Rich. William Shakespeare is a representative Elizabethan writer who has written 154 sonnets and five long narrative poems, along with 37 plays. Venus and Adonis, The Rape of Lucrece, the Passionate Pilgrim, The Phoenix and the Turtle, A Lover's Complaint are some of the poems written by William Shakespeare. This is followed by the metaphysical poetry of the 17th century. The word metaphysical poem is, means beyond this physical element. The metaphysical poets use the literary device known as conceit in their poetry. A metaphysical conceit refers to the combination of two dissimilar or heterogeneous ideas with it. John Donne is a representative metaphysical poet who wrote two kinds of poems, the secular love poems and the holy sonnets called as the religious poems. Valediction for body mourning, the flea are the two are the most important poems that are written by John Donne. Along with John Donne, we have George Herbert. Richard Crashaw, Henry Vaughan, and Andrew Marvell, who are other metaphysical poets belonging to 17th century. Andrew Marvell's To His Coy Mistress that he published in 1681 is a very beautiful metaphysical poem. Belonging to this age is John Milton, who is considered as the child of the Renaissance, and he is one of the most influential poets in English literature. 
He is known for his epic poem Paradise Lost published in 1667. The theme of Paradise Lost is justification of the ways of God to man and is based upon the Genesis the first chapter of Bible the creation of God making of Adam and Eve and the fall of man from paradise is the theme of it. The other notable works by Milton are a pastoral elegy titled as Lycidas a tragedy in words called as Samson and Aconistus, a sonnet on his blindness, and Paradise Regained, published in 1671. The metaphysical period is followed by the Restoration period, where Charles II is restored on the throne in 1660. The prominent poet from Restoration period is John Dryden. Though he is known as a critic and a playwright, his poems are equally important. His significant poems are allegories, satires and mock heroic poems like Macflacno, Absalom and Echetopil, Annus Mirabilis, Religio Lacy, The Hind and the Panther, Annie Kilgrew and Alexander's Feast. John Dryden is equally important as a critic, dramatist and poet. The 18th century, which is also called as the age of prose, reason and good sense has Alexander Pope as the representative poet in the first half. He Pope carried the critical and satirical spirit of his age in his poetry. His philosophical critical works like Essay on Criticism, Essay on Man are written in heroic couplets which is a standard classical literary form of the age. Pope's famously known mock heroic poem titled as The Rape of the Lock published in 1717, follows the conventions of classical epic. To criticize the social manners and customs of his times, Pope takes a trivial subject, which is an aristocratic young man cutting a lock of hair of a lady and presents it in the grand epic style. Hence, it is a mock heroic poem. Pope's other satires in the mock epic style that applies a grand style of presentation to a comic and trivial subject is Dunshiard. The word duns refers to a dull, unwittingly foolish person. In this satire, Pope criticizes the unworthy poets and publishers of his times. Rape of the Lock and Dunshiard are the masterpieces which are known for mock poetry in the 18th century. This is followed by the Romantic period. The official announcement of the beginning of the Romantic poetry in English is 1798 to 1832 and is conventionally attributed to the publication of Lyrical Ballads, which is a collection of poems by William Wordsworth and S. T. Coleridge in 1798. William Wordsworth is a truly typical Romantic poem and a bunch of poems belong to his pen. Michael, Daffodils, The Solitary Reaper, The Leech Gatherer, Tintern Abbey are wonderful pieces of poems written by Wordsworth. S.T. Coleridge, also a friend of Wordsworth and a wonderful romantic poet, has written The Rhyme of Ancient Marina. John Keats is a, belongs to the second generation of romantic poets. His odes are very famous marking him a typical and truly romantic poet. Ode to Nightingale, Ode to Psyche, Ode to the Gracian Urn, Ode on Melancholy, Ode to Autumn and Ode on Indolence are typical odes of Keats. Percy Bysshe Shelley, belonging to the second group of romantic poets, has penned to a skylark, Ode to the West Wind, England, in 1819, the masks of anarchy, which are masterpieces in romantic poetry. Along with Keats and Shelley, we have William Blake, whose poetry brings out the ills of the social, political and religious lives of the contemporary England. The marriage of heaven and hell, London, the chimney sweeper are typical poems of William Blake. The Romantic Age is followed by the Victorian period, which is from 1937 to, 2000, uh, to 19, sorry, 1837 to 1901. Lord Alfred Tennyson is a typical representative Victorian poet who has written beautiful poems like The Lotus Eaters, Ulysses and In Memoriam.
Along with Tennyson, we have Robert Browning, who is very famous for dramatic monologues. Fra Lippo Lippi, My Last Duchess, A Grammarian's Funeral are typical of Browning's poems. Along with Tennyson and Browning, we have a new movement that the Victorian period had seen, which is called as the Pre-Raphaelite Poets. These poets, namely Dante Rossetti, Christina Rossetti, William Morris and A.C. Swinburne belong to the Pre-Raphaelite Poets, also known as belonging to the Art for Art School of Poetry. Matthew Arnold also is a rep representative Victorian poet who is described in literature as a criticism of life. He was very serious about the role of poetry in shaping of good society. His poems such as The Scholar Gypsy and Dover Beach are his masterpieces. The Victorian age is followed by the modern period. The modern period that has seen the world wars belongs to the modern age, that is 1901 to 1915, which has the war poetry as the most important representative poetry. Hedwin, Sigfrid Sassoon, Rupert Brooke and Wilfred Owen are the war poets. The modern period also has seen two giants in writing poetry. One is W. B. Yeats and the other is T. S. Eliot. W. B. Yeats is an Irish poet. He is known for the poetry of deep mysticism. His poems are symbolical and mythological. The Second Coming, Sailing to Byzantium, Byzantium and the Tower are his masterpieces. T. S. Eliot is a representative modern poet. He modernized English poetry both in content and in form. The love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, published in 1950, the Wasteland, published in 1922, The Journey of the Magi and The Four Quartets, published in 1941, are his masterpieces. Eliot and Eats are typical modern poets, of whom T.S. Eliot is a literary dictator of the modern poetry. The other notable poets of the modern times are Dylan Thomas, Philip Larkin, William Carlos Williams, Seamus Heaney and others. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you had enjoyed the session. Let's meet in the next video. Bye for now.